Jonas and I are going on this little kayak trip. Here's a question for you. Do we as documentary filmmakers have a responsibility to tell the truth? Of course, you might think, of course, that's a silly question. I don't think it's as simple as you're either friggin' lying or you're telling the truth when you're doing a documentary because there's lots of lines in between. I like to look at it something like this. The whole gradient from super factual all the way to you just made up stuff and things fall in between. You ready? I think I am. Finally. <laughs> Are you stressed? I was. I was stressed. The reason for me wanting to talk about this is we went to a conference and a panel stood up in front of us. It was composed of people from all the different networks and they asked the same question. Are, do we have a responsibility to tell the truth, teach people science? And everybody more or less said yeah, it's part of our mission until the representative from Discovery Channel stood up and said no, we want to make what people want to watch. And this is what they showed. Aliens and the military. The list of global threats to the human race is long. But could Earth's armed forces be facing a new enemy that is literally out of this world? We have only to open our eyes to see how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? To me, the most interesting thing about that clip is that while it didn't lie and say there were aliens, it raised a bunch of questions that basically made it sound like there could be aliens. So in my mind, while it's not lying, it falls somewhere in the middle, and that might be uh, just not giving the full truth. And of course, all of us in the stands, we're science communicators. Our whole role is to try to tell people the truth, to try to communicate science as best we can. And I feel that maybe these documentaries are hurting the public by making people believe that maybe some of these things exist when they don't. Actually, I don't want to sound weak. My back is totally fine. Time for lunch. I'm going to present a couple of the popular shows that have come out recently, just to get you to think where it might fall along the scale. But first, we got to jump in. Whoa! We got to do the head. Oh, I'm going numb though now. This is Ulva. I like this first show. It's appropriate for what we're doing right at the moment. Mermaids, body found. Oh my god! What is that? Did you get shot? Oh my, oh my god! In 2004, two boys were the first to arrive on a mass whale beaching in Washington state. They captured it on a cell phone. The boys claimed they saw something that day. They claim they saw a body. <laughs> so clearly, Mermaids is a fake documentary. I mean, most people probably know that mermaids don't exist. But, uh, according to the lady from NOAA that I talked to, she said they got a flood of phone calls from people wanting to know if mermaids do actually exist. I don't know where the public would get that idea. Uh, uh, I mean, it was an interesting documentary, but it definitely doesn't lie on the um, completely terrible lie end of the scale. Oh, look at this. I gotta do a quick time lapse, hold on. Now take the documentary Voodoo Sharks, a little show uh, on Shark Week by Discovery Channel that went around trying to claim that there could be this mysterious large shark lurking through the waters uh, in kind of Louisiana area attacking people. Well, anyways, they found this shark biologist to interview. Jonathan Davis and his team of scientists arrive at their first destination, the brackish waters of the Gulf of Mexico, just outside of Lake Bourne. They believe that if there is a monster shark entering Lake Pontchartrain, it would likely be sticking to this area, where the salty waters of the Gulf meet the fresh waters just outside of New Orleans. Sharks are pretty amazing creatures. All of them have been found in weird places, so I'm not 100% certain that it would happen, but it could happen. The problem was he didn't know he was being interviewed for that show, and this is what he had to say about it. I asked a few of the crew members, including the producer, what the show was going to be about. I never got a straight answer, and the producer seemed to avoid the question. I was just told it would be combined with some other filming to make one show about Louisiana shark research. Personally, I think this is probably the worst thing that you could do, basically using a biologist that didn't uh, want his interview cut that way and cutting it up like that. It's not a full lie, it was basically using stuff that was said twisting the facts around a little bit though so I would place it far on the scale of towards the lie for me over the edge I don't know that show was in tandem with another show called Megalodon talking about a giant shark that thing is enormous 
If the shark that's in the Nazi U-boat photo is in fact the same shark that's in the shark eye photo that was taken just after the boat attack, then that means there's been a 50-ton monster in these waters for over 70 years. And Drake is running out of time to find it. It's very obvious that some of the networks are testing our sliding scale, trying to figure out what we're willing to accept in a documentary. They say that's what we want, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think that the whole way of doing the ratings might be flawed. Last night I was sick all night. The reason I think the whole system is flawed is that if you take some of those shows uh, that do well in the Nielsen ratings and you put them online, then they don't do as well. And people give them a lot of thumbs down. I think that might be a better uh, indicator of whether people like the show or not. So I wonder what the end result of all this is. Do we doubt the credibility of all shows that are saying they're giving us facts? These are facts. Or does it just make us doubt the credibility of those shows that are messing up their own credibility? <laughs> so then what do we do as the scientists, as the filmmakers, as those that are making these films? Probably could never go as far as having a boycott. It just wouldn't work. I'm going to bring this back to myself. I'm a host. I tell stories. I do science on TV. I've worked with almost all of the networks right at the moment. But it's not as easy as you might think to decide who you work with. Because when you pitch a story, you pitch it to everyone. Whoever decides they like your story and is willing to fund a project, then that's who you go with. So it's not so simple. But what I'd like to do, I'd like to ask you all now what you think the solution is. Oh gosh, it's so windy. Sorry about that. Where on this sliding scale do we cross the line? Obviously, when you're telling a story, I think it's okay to um, add a little bit of drama, as long as it's not too much. I mean, you take River Monsters, they do a pretty good job with that. But we as filmmakers, we as scientists, we uh, uh, people in the networks need to be held accountable for their actions. Uh, lying is not okay, obviously. But uh, this is a question for you all. Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. You are allowed to shoot certain things uh, to tell a story to prove a point, but you're not allowed to make up stories, like completely out of the blue, and tell them as if they were real. I think that's, that's where I draw the line.